the average CPU package power is 200.2 watts. Now let's do some manual overclocking. In our fourth and penultimate overclocking strategy, we take matters in our own hands. Rather than relying on Asus AI to determine the CPU ratios, we do the maximum CPU ratio configuration by ourselves. We still rely on the boost profiles, however, to set our OCTVB configuration. I particularly enjoy this configuration because on the surface, it seems that the actual difference between strategy four and strategy three is close to nothing. In terms of CPU ratio configuration, we are a little less aggressive on the frequency for three active cores and a little more aggressive on the frequency for six and seven active cores. However, the big difference lies in the subtle tuning of the VF point offsets. As we have noticed from the two previous strategies, when pushing the CPU with Prime95, the average frequency is around 4.78 GHz without AVX and 4.37 GHz with AVX512. The limiting factor for this frequency is twofold. One, our configured CPU package temperature threshold of 85 degrees centigrade and two, the maximum power draw of the Delta Tech, which is 200 watts. As the system dynamically adjusts the CPU frequency to fit within these parameters, we find that the maximum real-world CPU voltage for Prime95 small FFTs without AVX is around 1.29 volt, and for Prime95 small FFTs with AVX512 is around 1.21 volt. These voltages are set according to the factory-fused VF curve. To create extra frequency headroom, we can use the advanced voltage offset feature to undervolt specific parts of the VF curve. In our case, we adjust VF points 4, 5, 6 and 8. Undervolting the VF curve at points 4, 5 and 6 allows us to achieve slightly higher frequency between 4.3 GHz and 5.1 GHz. Overvolting VF point 8 ensures stability for the highest CPU ratio. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. Set Intel Adaptive Boost Technology to Disabled. Set ACES Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Set CPU Core Ratio to By Core Usage. Set 1 Core to 8 Core Ratio Limit to 55, 55, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 53. Enter the specific core submenu. Set core 0 to core 1 specific ratio limit to 55, 53, 54, 54, 55, 54, 54, 54. Leave the specific core submenu. Enter the thermal velocity boost submenu. Set overclocking TVB to plus 2 boost profile. Leave the thermal velocity boost submenu. Enter the VF point offset submenu. Set offset mode sign 4 to minus. Set VF.4 offset to 75 millivolts. Set offset mode sign 5 to minus. Set VF.5 offset to 35 millivolts. Set offset mode sign 6 to minus. Set VF.6 offset to 25 millivolts. Set offset mode sign 8 to plus. Set VF.8 offset to 50 millivolts. Leave the VF point offset submenu. Enter the AI features submenu. Set package temperature threshold to 85. Set regulate temperature threshold to enabled. Go to the monitor menu. Enter the QFAN configuration submenu. Enter the chassis fan configuration submenu. Set chassis fan profile to manual. Set chassis fan QFAN source to T sensor. Set chassis fan lower temperature to 30. Set chassis fan middle temperature to 35. Set chassis fan upper temperature to 40. Set chassis middle duty cycle to 60. Then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to stock operation. We achieved the highest performance across all benchmarks so far. Both the single-threaded performance gain of up to 9% and the CPU multi-threaded performance gain of up to 19% are quite impressive, as is the increase of up to 11% in our game benchmarks. 
using the negative VF point offset feature gave us about 100 MHz extra in Prime95. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4493 MHz with 1.111 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade and the average water temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 187.6 watts. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 4862 megahertz with 1.194 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade and the average water temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 200.8 watts. In our final overclocking strategy, we make some important changes to our configuration compared to the previous strategy. First, we push the maximum CPU frequency for one active core up to three active cores up by one ratio. This will increase the performance in lightly threaded workloads as the CPU can now boost up to 5.6 GHz for up to two cores. We keep the manual VF point offset configuration. Second, we manually configure the OCTVB. The main focus is to ensure that the peak frequencies are only set when the CPU temperature is low enough. Third, we change the cryo cooler setting from cryo mode to unregulated mode. We talked about cryo mode and unregulated mode in Scatterbanter episode 19. In case you forgot, or God forbid you didn't watch that video, let's remind ourselves what's the difference. In cryo mode, the Peltier element inside our Quantum X Delta Tech water block is only switched on when required and is switched off when not required. This greatly reduces the overall power consumed as the tech is not running at full power all the time. The Intel software regulates the cooler temperature by assessing the humidity in the room as well as the CPU temperature. Based on these inputs, the software ensures that the maximum cooling is provided at any time while ensuring the temperature does not drop below the dew point and cause condensation issues. This mode is indicated by a green icon in the desktop tray and a green LED on the tech controller. In unregulated mode, the Quantum X Delta Tech cools well below ambient temperature with less protection from condensation. In this mode, there will be condensation risk on the heatsink surfaces and surroundings due to the low temperature. This mode is indicated by a white icon in the desktop tray and a purple LED on the tech controller. Upon entering the BIOS, Go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. Set Intel Adaptive Boost Technology to Disabled. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Set CPU Core Ratio to By Core Usage. Set 1 Core to 8 Core Ratio Limit to 56, 56, 55, 54, 54, 54, 54, 53. Enter the specific core submenu. Set Core 0 to Core 1 specific ratio limit to 56, 53, 55, 55, 56, 56, 54, 54. Leave the specific core submenu. Enter the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Set Overclocking TVB to Enabled. Set 1 core to 8 core active to Enabled. For 1 core to 8 core active, set Temperature A to 25, 20, 60, 64, 62, 60, 56, 52. For one core to eight core active, set negative ratio offset A to user specify. For one core to eight core active, set ratio offset to one. For one core to eight core active, set temperature B to 55, 45, 70, 74, 72, 70, 66, 62. For one core to eight core active, Set negative ratio offset B to user specify. For one core to eight core active, set ratio offset to one. Leave the thermal velocity boost submenu. Enter the VF point offset submenu. Set offset mode sign four to minus. Set VF point four offset to 75 millivolts. Set offset mode sign five to minus. Set VF point five offset to 35 millivolts. Set offset mode sign six to minus. Set VF.6 offset to 25 millivolts. 
set offset mode sign 8 to plus. Set VF point 8 offset to 50 millivolts. Leave the VF point offset submenu. Enter the AI features submenu. Set package temperature threshold to 85. Set regulate temperature threshold to enabled. Go to the monitor menu. Enter the QFAN configuration submenu. Enter the chassis fan configuration submenu. Set chassis fan profile to manual. Set chassis fan Q fan source to T sensor. Set chassis fan lower temperature to 30. Set chassis fan middle temperature to 35. Set chassis fan upper temperature to 40. Set chassis middle duty cycle to 60. Then save and exit the BIOS. We re-ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to stock operation. As we had hoped for, we achieved the highest performance in all benchmarks with our latest overclocking strategy. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4523 MHz with 1.113 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade and the average water temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 190.1 watts. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 4831 MHz with 1.191 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade and the average water temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 200.5 watts. All right, let's wrap this up. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the final overclocked system. It was pretty cool to finally be able to use all of the available Intel overclocking knobs and put them to good use. And I found that the vast majority, if not all of the available overclocking knobs are really effective when it comes to helping you get more frequency or improving your system performance. Comparing the overclocked system versus my default configuration, in the best case scenario, in an ideal world, you'll get up to 300 megahertz extra when up to two cores are active and about 500 megahertz extra when up to eight cores are active. In Prime95 with AVX 512, that translates into an effective frequency increase from 3.8 gigahertz to 4.5 gigahertz. And in Prime95 without AVX, uh, it translates into an effective frequency increase from about 4.3 gigahertz to 4.8 gigahertz. When it comes to the benchmarks, we see a um, performance increase of up to 11% for single threaded workloads, up to 21% for multi threaded workloads, and up to 11% for gaming workloads. The per core ratio limit, which is a new feature on Rocket Lake, really helped in the sense that it allowed me to restrict. The, or prevent the weaker cores from boosting to frequencies that it would not be able to run stably. So I would say that's a really big improvement compared to Comet Lake, especially when we're talking about the higher or the upper frequencies like 5.6 gigahertz. Tuning the voltages with the VF point offset or advanced voltage offset, however you wanna call it, uh, gave me an additional 100 megahertz in multi-threaded, very heavy workloads. Um, I'm particularly happy with the results uh, that I got from tuning the VF point offsets because it gave me a true sense of appreciation for the power that the, this option provides us. Um, I think I can really appreciate now you know, how undervolting specific VF points can translate into higher performance, especially when you're in a situation where you're either uh, constrained by power usage or you're constrained by temperature. OCTVB didn't really change that much from Comet Lake other than your ability to uh, change the ratio at the second temperature offset point. Um, but other than that, the Rocket Lake experience of OCTVB is very similar to the Comet Lake experience. Um, I was able to set the, or I was able to idle in the operating system at 5.7 gigahertz, but I wasn't able to dial it into a configuration that I would be able to run on a daily system. Um, 5.6 gigahertz is, I know, a, a bit lower than the six gigahertz that we reached with Comet Lake in uh, Scatterbencher episode 919. 
and I feel like the primary reason for the maximum frequency limitation on Rocket Lake is that the architecture doesn't really scale that well with sub-ambient temperatures. It, that's not really new information because we saw the overclocking results with liquid helium. Rocket Lake went up to 7.3 gigahertz, Comet Lake went all the way up to 7 gigahertz. So that's about a 400 megahertz difference in maximum CPU frequency with you know, liquid helium cooling. When using strong ambient cooling solutions, Rocket Lake is pretty much on par with Comet Lake when it comes to a single threaded uh, frequency. So up to 5.4, 5.5, 5.6 gigahertz, maybe if you have a really good sample. Um, Multi-threaded applications, it's maybe one or 200 megahertz uh, lower, uh, but you know, overall it's pretty similar Rocket Lake uh, versus Comet Lake on strong ambient cooling solutions. All things considered, I still had a lot of fun tuning the Rocket Lake platform with OCTVB and cryo cooling. Uh, it took me about two weeks to dial in the final overclocked setting and then about three weeks or four weeks or I don't know, however more weeks it took me to finish the video um, to you know put everything together. The end result of 5.6 gigahertz is not as satisfying as reaching the six gigahertz on Comet Lake. But overall, I had a lot of fun exploring all of the different Intel overclocking knobs, finally uh, making really good use of the VF point offset feature. So yeah, it was, it was fun pushing this system to the max. All right, that's it for this video. I will not make the same mistake uh, for, uh, or I will not make the same mistake again of promising you that I will not make any Rocket Lake videos anymore. Uh, you know, I've done that in the past and here we are, uh, but I am kind of more looking forward to preparing for Intel's next generation platforms, which will hopefully come relatively soon. So uh, yeah, that will be where my focus is. If you have any questions about this video, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them if I can. Uh, and if not, until the next time. Thank you.